Saturday afternoon. I've been saying Saturday morning for the past four and a half hours, but Saturday afternoon, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, 2018. The signs say, from where do you come? The history of the area, particularly Hemingford. Hemingford, Quebec is where we are, or Quebec, as they say up this side of the tracks. We're at Archives Hemingford for the opening of their brand new museum here on May 5th. We're on Champlain Street, just about uh, a stone's throw from the U.S. border in the Moore's Customs. And we're going to take a look inside and see what they have to offer here in an opening ceremony. It's a grand opening today, May 5th, 2018. Archives Hemingford. We are inside and have been inside for well over half an hour now. The people who will be talking with us and leading us around uh, are busy and we're going to, after the ceremony, take a look around at this uh, archive. They're, I guess they're not going to call it a museum, they're gonna, they call it an archive, so but it certainly looks like a museum to me. And We'll be talking to people, including this lady here, uh, a former Trombley from the Chazy area, and I found out her husband uh, Richard Ducharme is a distant relative of mine, and we might find out a whole lot of other things before the day is all said and done here in Hemingford. I've got a four o'clock uh, confirmation in West Chazy, so I can't spend the day. Hopefully, they'll get this uh, underway. The, the cowbell is ringing. Good afternoon, everyone. Find yourself a seat or a spot there, and we will begin. Bon après-midi tout le monde. Merci d'être venu accepter notre invitation pour l'ouverture officielle des archives Hemingford. On va vous faire un petit compte rendu bilingue, là, très rapide. We will uh, just give you a resume of what has happened since the very beginning. M'entendez-vous en arrière? Oui! J'ai bien de la gueule. Normalement, euh, c'est pas le problème. <rire> début des années 1990. Archive de Mingford a eu ses débuts chez Betty McKay McKenzie, à saint lambert Betty, qui a grandi à Hemingford, est descendante de la famille Brownlee, qui est arrivée à Hemingford de l'Écosse en 1819. Elle faisait des recherches pour retracer ses liens aux familles Brownlee, Farr et McKay, qu'elle a publié dans un livre intitulé « Times Remembered ». Ça a été écrit en 1996 et contenait 411 pages. Puisque les sites Internet pour faire des recherches n'étaient pas si accessibles à l'époque, Betty et son mari, George, ont fait beaucoup de voyages à Québec, à Ottawa, à la recherche de, de documents archivés. Her family connections, being a very large, over 2,000 cousins found. Betty soon found that she had reams of documents that were important to the history of Hemingford, going back to the first land grants in 1793. These documents, they touched on church records 1837 rebellion, 1860-1870 Fenian raids, Hemingford's 51st militia, among a few. This resulted in her realization that these documents belong in Hemingford. So that's how Hemingford archives were born. 1992, administrator fondateur était Betty McKenzie, Jackie Stoneberger, co-président, et Sylvie Dubuc, trésorière. Le 14 mai 1993, Archive Minford a reçu son numéro d'organisme caritatif du gouvernement fédéral. Le 5, 15 septembre 1993, 
nous avons reçu notre numéro d'organisme caritatif du gouvernement provincial. 1997, Hemingford Archives found a home in Hemingford and Betty transferred her archives to the Hemingford Town Hall, sharing the premises with the library in a space vacated by the fire hall. Page en premier. 1999, Berry a collaboré avec une multitude de résidents locaux, ce qui a conduit au lancement du livre « 200 ans d'espoir et de défi » 1799 à 1999. En 2010, le conseil d'administration a été constitué et les archives à Milford étaient incorporées. 2012, the principal of Hemingford Elementary School, Mr. Greg Edwards, offered a large well-lit room to Hemingford Archives with access to the gymnasium for special events. These premises and collaboration with the school staff, they were enjoyed for over five years. During this period, as the collections continued to grow more than the space available, Storage space at board members' home were used for the overflow. 2015-2016, two members of the Église Presbyterienne, Sally Kyle and Darby Somerville Hill, ont travaillé au nom de leur congrégation pour obtenir l'approbation de faire un don de leur ancienne salle, une salle communautaire, un camp concept d'origine. En même temps, le CA a soumis des applications pour des subventions au gouvernement. June 2016, deed was signed at the notary office. Hemingford Archives owns the building. 2016-2017, le financement pour la construction est obtenu de la part de du ministère du patrimoine canadien par l'entremise du Fonds du Canada pour les espaces culturels et ministère des Affaires municipales des régions et l'occupation du territoire Québec, un fonds conjoncturel du développement Québec. Également, Hemingford, municipalité du village et du canton. Campagne de levée de fonds qui a été soutenue généreusement par la communauté locale et les amis d'extérieur. En juin 2017, June 2017, Renovations and an extension were started under the expert direction of the volunteer project manager, Leonard Priest, who drew up the plans as well as managing the construction. The old concept building was turned into a very modern Hemingford Historical Archives with all the up-to-date technology included. November 27, et pendant les mois suivants, tout a été sorti de l'entreposage déballé, réorganisé par un nombre impressionnant de bénévoles extraordinaires. Ce projet n'aurait pas pu être réalisé sans eux. 2018, May, here we are, celebrating officially the permanent home of Hemingford Original Archives. Thank you, merci. Drew, would you come up and say a few words, please? Monsieur le maire du village de Hemingford. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, I should say. Um, I'd like to congratulate the committee of the archives um, for the wonderful job that they've done transforming this former church hall into the wonderful place that we have right here. Um, I was thinking this morning with fumbling around with no power, trying to get breakfast going, and thinking <laughs> probably most of the archives in this building were all written by hand, by daylight or candlelight, much like we were doing this morning, <laughs> working by daylight and candlelight. And I wish you many years of uh, of um, pleasure of 
keeping, safekeeping of the archives of our history. Thank you very much. Également, je vais demander au maire du canton, M. Paul Bio, uh, mayor of the Hemingford Township, come up and say a few words, please. Bon après-midi tout le monde, good afternoon. C'est avec un grand plaisir que je suis ici, c'est officiel, parce que je me souviens la première fois. First time we spoke about this building, I remember the comment that I got, and I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is what, is what I was dreaming, but it didn't look like this, and that's thanks to the volunteers and the people that believe in Hemingford, believe in the archives, want the history to stay with us, and it shows that there's a lot of uh, love, love for the community. It doesn't matter if it's village or township, it's really our community, and uh, I am so proud to be the mayor of the township and being part of this, and congratulations, félicitations. Monsieur le ministre, je, je m'excuse de vous avoir sauté en salutation. Euh, je sais comment c'est important pour vous de vous faire reconnaître. Il y a aussi euh, la mère de M. Tuto qui est ici avec nous autres. Merci à Robert de, de venir. De, c'est notre voisin, mais c'est un voisin proche. On travaille très, très bien ensemble et on a du plaisir à travailler ensemble. Fait que pour la municipalité, pour la MRC, c'est un qui à terre, qui dit que les archives, que la culture, que le... Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé hier est important. C'est ça qui décide qu'est-ce qui va se passer demain. So, thank you very much and congratulations to you all. Comme vous avez sûrement vu, il y a un beau gâteau ici en avant. C'est notre intention là, de fêter ça en grain. Alors, euh, je vais inviter M. le ministre. C'est le ministre de la petite et moyenne entreprise, de l'allègement réglementaire et du développement régional, et surtout député de Huntington, M. Pierre. For everyone down here, they all call me Stéphane, so it's a little bit shorter, so we we'll save a lot of time this way. Hey, bonjour tout le monde, c'est un plaisir. Monsieur le maire, je pense que c'est important votre présence également, and all the volunteers have been working on it. Congratulations. You know when Mr. Smith was talking about all the history and all that stuff there? Look what we have right now. People got involved and said we're gonna that was a dream the first time they show up in the office. They say we got archives in the basement and now we're looking to have a building. They say, Well, where are we starting from? And when people have visions, they're looking for something, look what they have. They follow their dreams and they got exactly what they got. And I'll tell you it's really a great day today for Hemingford because First of all, it's a day we're going we're gonna to save the stuff we have, as well as the articles, papers, documents. When we lose it, it's all gone. So better keep it. I will tell you, when it's disappeared, to know where we are going, to know where we are going. So it's important to preserve our archives. And I will tell you, second, for your personnel, it's very important. My mother's name is Deno. She's from Hemingford, for no one knows. So my grand-grandfather was Joe Deno there, right by my office there. That's where we used to live. And my grandfather was not bad. He was living at the fort. I wear the Biet's name, but half of my my name is Dono, so from Hemingford. It's always good to roots, and I've seen some documents too from my family. So it's really a great moment on a personal side for me. Et je vais vous dire, si on peut réaliser des projets comme ça, c'est grâce à la concertation. On voit dans les communautés des gens qui travaillent ensemble, que ce soit les, les municipalités, aussi bien au niveau régional, Saint-Bernard, Hemingford, le canton de Hemingford également. Les bénévoles également, les gens qui sont engagés, qui regardent ce qu'on peut faire ensemble. On a quoi d'être fiers de notre communauté aujourd'hui? We've got to be proud of the community today. Built up something like this and say, first of all, we keep a building. Otherwise, what we'll have to do with it, and we serve our archives. Fait que je veux dire, c'est très, très bien reçu. Je veux dire, c'est important pour la communauté. Et je pense que c'est fait pour des générations encore à venir. Donc, félicitations. Puis les gens qui ont travaillé d'arrache-pied, all the people, they, they never calculated the time they put on it, but it's really great. Je vois M. Dalbert, Mme Dalbert, j'ai dit, je vais commencer, ça n'arrêtera pas. Mais je vais dire, vous avez mis du temps, de l'énergie, surtout du cœur, et c'est comme ça qu'on peut le réaliser. 
governmental help to forty thousand dollars we put in the building, and we never forgot the coffee corner down there. We fixed that up with Monsieur uh, Luc Forte, Minister of Culture, that was here last summer. Uh, everyone's laughing with $2,500, we're going to fix it there, we'll have the corner, it's built, I'm so happy to see it, but it's 40, 40, close to $43,000 to put into the building, and we, we're really proud, it's not an expense, it's an invest, an invest for the future, for our kids, and remember where we're coming from. Donc, merci beaucoup, félicitations, congratulations to all the people who have been working, you made something too great. Right? Oh, that, that's true. This year? Ben, parfait. I was making an announcement this week too. Uh, every year I'm doing other, I'm doing politics, but sports there sometimes. Everything for him. Everything. And uh, that will be done this year for the elementary school on the other side. So I'll pick up money. I'll raise money. I made it for the French school three years ago. And this year that will be my announcement on the, uh, on Monday I made it. So I'll be working, uh, we can call that work on a bicycle. We're going to get a fit pair of so I'll be doing a thousand kilometers in one week. In the one week, in three days. And the money I'll raise, I'll be sent right away to the school. So you can invest in all the sports and all for the kids from the community. Bravo. So, Merci beaucoup. Thank you. J'ai dit, si je commande un applaudissement, il, il, il va loger. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, what's next? Uh, I guess the cutting of the cake. Cutting of the cake. Okay. Okay. On a du cidre. On a du, de, du cidre, la face cachée de la pomme. Puis également, il y a 20 fromages. On a aussi un cidre du, du minot. Alors, si vous voulez venir vous chercher un verre, il va y de la place un peu, puis après ça, un bon morceau de gâteau. Monsieur le député, il doit nous laisser, je crois. Hein? On va manger un morceau de gâteau. On va manger un morceau de gâteau. Je vais rentrer sur les grands défis. Mrs. Mary Ducharme will cut the cake. Well deserved. Là, à cause de sa condition, elle est toujours sur le, le CA de, des archives, elle travaille encore, mais j'aimerais juste souligner sa participation et tout le travail qu'elle a fait pour les archives ici. Je pense que c'est important de, de, pas juste la nommer, mais de dire quelques mots pour elle parce que effectivement elle a fait un travail monumental ici. So I just wanted to say that rather than just mentioning Mary Duchamp, she has been for more than the past five years president of the archives. And um, she is currently, because of her condition, because she can't be as, as effective as she was before, she's still uh, on the board of directors. And uh, I think it's, it's very important because her contribution has been absolutely vast to the archives. 
her and, and Myrna Paquette as well for the cornerstones of the archives. They're here every day, they've been here every day, doing all the work that needs to be done with various volunteers coming and going, but they've always been here. And I would like to give them a, a hand of applause. Because they Bravo. To the archives. To the archives. <laughs> We've moved into the back room, the formal presentation is done, and I recognize one of the faces in the crowd. Uh, what's your name, young lady? Beverly Maynard. <laughs> and uh, I knew the Maynards were from uh, La Cole area, because uh, uh, we did a, a little story on the, the connection between the, the Maynards and La Cole and the, and the family that's in Champlain and Shazy and so on. But you're telling me off camera that uh, your mother was on the Ketty side of things. Right. And that's very much Hemingford. Right. It's a Hemingford name. Right. So, now where's, you were pointing out a picture before the camera came on? What's, right. This is my grandfather. That's your grandfather. What's his name? Ernest. Ernest Ketty. This is my mother. Okay, I think I saw that in the Champlain 2000 book. I think I saw her picture that Maynard, Marshall, uh, Marshall Maynard put in there. There isn't a picture of her mother, but... So the, uh, the Keddies and the long... So this, whoop, I guess it's closing time. Last call. Make, that's going to be your last bottle of wine there, I think. So you've got a lot of ants. Who made up this uh, very don't, impressive? They don't know. Who, they don't know who did it. No, they said it just appeared one day. Out of nowhere. Yep. Is that some of your relatives? Yes. So oh, a whole bunch oh, of Kettys here in the Hemingford Museum. And we'll, we'll let her uh, show the other interested folks. And there's a W. Ketty and Sons uh, Limited Contractors here in Hemingford. Of course, I know several Keddies in the Champlain area. And this is the back room here where the literature is to uh, come and explore. It reminds me very much of the uh, Genealogy Museum in, in Denimore, the American Canadian North, that's the uh, North American American Canadian Genealogy Society, I think they're called. But it's got uh, a lot of archives, a lot of uh, places to track down the history of families in Hemingford and I'm sure there's a whole lot of genealogy here if uh, any of your ancestors came from what we would call north of the border they might have come through here I know the scriber name is very much uh, a part of the uh, history here and there's another W. Ketty and Sons. And for those of you watching way out of town who are not part of the northern tier of uh, Clinton County, Hemingford is uh, just about, well, it's right on the, the town is right on the border with Moors, and you cross Moors into uh, Canada. You cross from Moors into Hemingford, and the... the village here is uh, probably I guess three or four miles from the, from the border so not too far uh, they are part of the fire department mutual aid group when they have a fire in Moores uh, folks from uh, Hemingford are likely to be on call and might come across the border and help establish uh, extinguish the fire and the same thing when there's a fire on this side of the uh, the border people from Moores and Champlain has been here many times, Rouse's Point, uh, very much part of our mutual aid group. So our relationship uh, is very strong between Hemingford and uh, northern Clinton County.
But everywhere you look, there's items of interest. And yeah, we're going to learn more about how this was all preserved. Hopefully from one of the people who helped get all this going. We've captured one of the people that is one of the movers and shakers of making all this happen. And we found out that uh, she's a Trombley, but not one of the B-L-E-Y Tromblies, one of the B-L-Y Tromblies, which probably means you're from the Shay-Z area. Yes, uh, from Shay-Z, and the name T-R-O-M-B-L-Y has given me a lot of trouble in Quebec. <laughs> Nobody wants to believe that that's the real spelling. It's supposed to be spelled Tremblay, right? Not exactly right, yeah. <laughs> and I know my, my friend Dean Trombley, he's still Trombley, but his kids and his grandkids are all Tremblays now uh, yeah. as they move around. And, and my mother's, excuse me, my father's mother, Delia Trombley, I look back at some of the spellings of her father's name. It was spelled B-L-E-Y, then it became uh, you know, B-L-A-Y was the original spelling, then it became B-L-O-M-B-L-E-Y. And so uh, but the, the Trombleys and Shazy went with the B-L-Y name, but they're all related. I always wondered if Trombley Bay, which is spelled the same way as my name, was always spelled that way. Yeah. And I don't know historically how that goes. It would be interesting to find out. Yeah, you have to look at some old maps and see how right. how it was spelled. And as you know, a lot of those old spellings are are based on the ear of the person doing that, the spelling. That's right. Now, okay, your name? As uh, Mary Trombley. I am the daughter of Hersey and Eleanor Trombley of Shazy, and I'm the oldest of ten children. Okay. Any relation to a guy named Lyles? Lyles is my uncle. Cool. Yeah. And we, you know, we did some great stories with the Lyles and Tony and Marsha and the uh, yes. John Deere tractors. And in fact, just recently, because Mr. Gary Finney died, I put on the video that Lyles did along with my father and Bob Venn with Gary Finney talking about the, uh, the John Deere days. Did you ever yeah. go to John Deere days when you were a youngster? Yes. And uh, also related, of course, another one of that family is Alma Giroux. And uh, Sardo Jiru also had a John Deere business. So there, there's a, a lot of farming families associated with that generation. The Bayshards, uh, many others. Yeah, my, uh, my aunt Anna Trudeau married uh, Clarence Trombley, and they yeah. lived uh, there in Shazy, and that was an L-E-Y. Of course, he, he came from a, a big family with Richard and Russell and yes. Bimbo and all those other guys. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's very interesting. My husband and I have traveled to uh, Bay St. Paul, where the original Pierre Tremblay came from Rondonet, France. And my niece has been to Rondonet. Um, that's my brother Neil's daughter. Um, and took pictures of the house that Pierre Tremblay lived in. It's still existing in the church he went to. And they say that there are thousands of Tromblies from North America, descendants of him, that go to visit there every year. Now, I know in the case of the Trudeaus, my mother, as I said, was a Trudeau. Uh, the first one was Trudeau with a T. And uh, all the Trudeaus have come down since then came from that one person. Is that still the case with the, uh, with the Tromblies? Pierre Trombley is the first in North America, and all our descendants of him by that name. So you and I are cousins then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably can't throw a stone too far in Clinton County without hitting a cousin. Nah, that's right. I, I think I'm related to half, of, at least half of uh, Clinton County. <laughs> now, your name isn't Trombley now, it's Ducharme. Uh, it's Ducharme and married Richard, and... Uh, is also uh, with uh, Roots in Quebec, the Ducharme family. And uh, so we're living in Quebec now, and yeah, other than the spelling of my name, I feel like I belong here, you know, but belong equally in New York State and Jay-Z. Now, you, you were, you know, Richard was telling me that you lived in Nova Scotia for a while, then yeah. how long ago did you move here to Hemingford? In uh, Nova Scotia, there was, uh, in Cape Breton, where we live, 
there was no other family by the name of Ducharme and no other Trombley's. So we were really odd balls there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nova Scotia, is it, was it much French there? Or was it Irish and English, or what was that? Well, in Nova Scotia is primarily Scottish, a lot of Irish. There are French communities, uh, such as Chetty Camp and Ile Madame. Um, and the French that is spoken there is like 17th century French, more akin to that than Quebec French. The Quebec French and the uh, Cape Breton French don't understand each other too well. <laughs> like, like we talk to somebody from the South, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Now, one thing I'm upset with my parents is that they both spoke French very well. In fact, my mother, before she went to school, spoke only French, and I think that's one of the reasons that they didn't pass it on to us. And my father, of course, he spoke French too, because you know, his, his family was French. My mother's family was very French. Uh, did your family did you speak French when you were growing well, up? Well, I, I, I've talked about this many, many times to many people in Quebec because they want to know why a person with a French name, or two French names, doesn't speak French. And uh, my grandparents spoke French on both sides. And um, they, my mother and father spoke French as their first language at home. But when they went to school in upstate New York, weren't allowed to use French in school because the feeling was, if you want to get ahead in life, you learn English, you don't know, learn French. And that was a very poor attitude. And now a thousand times over, I wish I was bilingual Same living here. here. I only knew half of what he was saying up there today. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And uh, my experience in the, in the hospital, I've been hospitalized since January, is a kind of a French immersion, <laughs> you know, because uh, there's a lot of uh, the nurses and doctors, other patients who don't speak English. So. Yeah, so, or, they, or maybe some can and don't want to. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> but they can't. Now, I also found out I'm related to your husband. Yeah. Yeah, through the Dutos. My, uh, Joseph Francois Castine, who was the first Castine in Champlain, he shows up in the 1869 map. He married a Duto, yeah. and uh, Mr. Ducharme or somebody along his son uh, Richard's side of the family married a Duto, the sister of this Marie Madeleine. You know, and so it's it's a small world. I think the people of Quebec and the people of upstate New York, and upstate Vermont, they're the same people. And, and the interrelation is immense. And I think that's a, a, a wonderful thing to discover and, and explore. And that's why I'm involved in history. I love the family history aspect of it and finding the connections and the stories, especially the stories of the older people. And uh, we do oral history interviews with seniors, record them, um, put them in print, publish them, so that um, in future generations their stories will survive. Do you keep the audio? Do you, you do well, it in audio? We, we, have, we keep the audio. We have them in print and we have them in audio. Um, and uh, we keep changing the technology to keep up with the time so that they're always available for people to listen to if they should, would like to. I did... Um, some extensive interviewing of my mother and father, which are precious to the family, to hear their voices now and hear the stories of when they met and the World War II days and um, us growing up, that, that kind of thing. Um, and if it hadn't been recorded, a lot of that would have been just lost. Yeah, you, you know, we... We like to think that once we've been told something, we're going to remember it, but we don't always remember. No, we don't. And we always don't always remember to pass it along to the next generation. And so many of the things we should have asked, you think of it later, oh, I should have asked them about this or that. And so that's I'm glad you that's did pretty it. well a universal um, attitude. You know, I wish I had talked to my parents more. I wish I had talked to my grandparents because they know so much. Um, there's, a, there's a saying in Africa, when an old person dies, it's like the death of a village. You know, you've lost so much um, that 
touches on so many people, um, and it's never can be recovered. So. Yeah, that's true. Once those memories yeah. are gone, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. Now you lived here. How long did you say you came to Hemingford? How long ago? Uh, we came in the year 2000, and um, we've been here 18 years. Um, it took a while to acclimate, but we discovered that Hemingford is half English, half French, so it's it's fairly easy to to navigate anything. You know, the, the only things I don't care about doing is uh, going to a doctor who doesn't speak English or a, or a car repairman. I don't care about those experiences too much. But. So you got involved quite quickly then into with this Archives Hemingford then? Yes. Um, I got bored because I was retired uh -huh. from teaching and I also worked as a writer editor for a magazine in Nova Scotia. I was used to being involved in community organizations and I was uh, lost here, you know, for a long time. And then I asked, said to a neighbor, I need something to do. And uh, he says, oh, well, I have something in mind. And at the time, the, um, the archives was very small. Um, the, the founder of it was aging and was coming less to Hemingford from St. Lambert. And there weren't many volunteers involved. And the community organization asked me, well, would you see if we can sustain the archives. And so I dug into it. And I loved it so much. Got, finally got other people involved and it grew from there. It's amazing, you must be extremely proud and pleased today. Oh, I am. Like every dream I had for it has come true. You know, so the people, um, the contributions, the involvement of the community, um, the support of the government, it's all been a very positive experience. Now you took a, a fall, was it in January you took a fall? Yes, I was working here in the archives and I was just going to put a, a frame on a table and I missed up somehow and fell, broke my leg in 15 places and broke my shoulder. So I've been in the hospital since January. And you just recently got out. Right? And just recent. Well, I'm not out. You're not out. I'm you're just going out back. in parole today. <laughs> and you're going back. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. So that wasn't too pleasant an experience. But I had also been diagnosed with cancer oh. uh, last year. So it's not been an easy couple of years for me at all. I can't imagine. So is the hospital nearby? Or? Uh, it's in Armstown, it's a few miles from here. Oh, that's not too bad then. No. <laughs> so close to home. Yeah. Okay, and you didn't say kilometers either, you said miles. Oh, I can't be cured of it. <laughs> I mean, look, look, Robert Frost, and, and kilometers to go before I sleep? I mean, you can't do that. No, no, no. It has to be miles. <laughs> Well, I've, I took it off now, but I'm wearing a corner gas cap when I came in here because it's one of my favorite Canadian, one of my favorite TV shows, and one of my favorite Canadian TV shows. And I don't know if you ever watch Corner Gas, but if you haven't, you you've missed something good. Hi. But uh, one of the things they, there's a family in Saskatchewan, and they're arguing about the thermostat in the house, and of course it's all Celsius. But in the house, it was set at 72. Yeah. Well, not Celsius. It was, so yeah. even though they're, when they go outside, it's uh, yeah. Celsius, inside it was 72 Fahrenheit. Well, uh, in a lot of ways, we're hopelessly American and <laughs> just, just can't help ourselves. <laughs> well, Mary, we hope you're up and about. To, uh, I will not be to, soon. There we go. This will be on the internet, so you can sit there and watch it over and over again. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, uh, we're hoping to get a tour here. I forget who our tour guide is. We've got an official tour guide somewhere. Well, your husband's over there grabbing some cheese. I saw him there. He's, I, I grabbed my, myself a slice of cheese, too. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, I'm so glad you came and uh, saw what we're up to. All right. Well, I'll say hello to all the Tremblays back in... Okay. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Mary.
This is certainly not what this building looks like, but this is what this building was. It's, it used to be a, a Quonset hut, and we've uh, corralled somebody who's going to take us around. What's your name? Rosemary Campbell, and I'm the vice president for the Hemingford Archives at the moment. So we have a display of all of these pictures that show the Quonset hut from the original to all the hard work that was done on it. Uh, the mayor of the village and the mayor of the townships were involved in helping us renovate the building and the executive uh, for the Hemingford Archives. Um, so really, if you want to move down the pictures a okay, bit. Okay, well, we'll just, well, I can see these here. This, yeah. Uh, how long from start to finish here? If we're looking at that one on the top left, uh, how long between there and what it looks like right now? Well, the actual, the actual construction itself was about a year. But securing the building and doing the paperwork and getting the, the building in the name of the Hemingford Archives was like three or four years. Uh, Leonard Priest was a key player uh, in getting this set and securing the building for the archives, uh, doing the plans, getting an architect to draw plans for us. Uh -huh. Before you get any grants, you got to have... Getting the government you grants. you got to get plans. Yeah, we got a provincial and a federal government grant. That's um, true on both sides of the border. Yep, on both sides. And yep. also the village and the township uh, provided some funds to help with oh. the renovations in the building. Okay, now uh, in that top right photo, you can see just part of the church. Now, the church is not part of this property, but they're the ones who uh, gave or at least made available the Quonset Hut. Right? Yeah, the, the church still owns the church, but what they did is they sold this building to the Hemingford Archives. Okay. They, it was originally offered to the village, but the village was not interested in purchasing it. Um, so the paperwork was done up, and uh, it's formally owned by the Hemingford Archives. Hemingford Archives is a charitable organization as well as incorporated. So we're incorporated, so we run like a business. Um, so therefore, we can own property. Uh, we ask people to make donations to help us keep the, build, the building going. It's a nonprofit and business. So nonprofit so? business, and the donations um, are tax deductible and can be used with tax and tax credits. So. Okay. Um, we have Leonard Priest. I don't know if you can get the picture of him yep. by that tractor uh -huh. there. That's Leonard Priest, who was uh, one of the key people in getting the the renovations and really getting this dream fulfilled. It was his dream. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't here today. We had a really nice award for him, but he isn't here. We'll make sure he gets it. But it was his, his, his was the, he was the biggest dreamer of this. It's unfortunate that he can't be here. No, no unfortunately he wasn't here. Prior to it actually being renovated, every September we have um, uh, the, flea, uh, the weekend flea markets. Uh -huh. So we actually had More fundraisers here. Yeah, we raised fund. We did so sold this was tables. In the and, hut. Yeah, yeah, this was inside before it got renovated to what it is today. So, so that's a part of it. So just looking at the building itself, I don't know if, if you can see here. This is the main office. Okay. This is the office where the vice, where the president of the organization sits. This okay. is where a lot of the planning, a lot of the meetings go on in here. And then behind this display. We have eight uh, workstations for our volunteers. Yeah, so there's eight, and we can walk to the back uh, in a few minutes. There's eight workstations where all our volunteers are, our computers, people do researching, writing, and stuff like that. How often does that happen? Well, Myrna, who's in the red here, is our secretary, is here all the time. Um, I'm here probably about 50% of the time. And we have other volunteers who come in and help us stuff envelopes when we're doing fundraising. They do letters and photocopying. They help us file stuff in the Archie log. Uh, okay, now you say all the time, oh, half the time. All the time. What, what are the times? Times. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 10 to 4. Okay. There's usually someone here. And s we open it up on Saturdays from 10 to 1 because a lot of people are working during the week. Those are the hours that are posted. However, if somebody wants to come in and do something or meet with us in an evening, all they have to do is contact us and we'll always come in and meet them outside of those hours. Because it's a completely 100% volunteer organization. Nobody's getting paid for this. We tried to set some core hours, uh, but we're very open to having people coming in. So I don't know if we want to move down to the back Sure, I'll keep the camera rolling just so people can get a grasp of uh, the size of this place.
you can't always tell that. Here's some more of the construction going on. Go, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so the, the whole area, the whole area that's behind you. Obviously, this is where we're able to have presentations, have people sit. We have an, a stage that was built here. We had a, we had an event called the Fiddler's Fancy yeah, a couple that, of weeks the, ago. Yeah, I saw that on the so Facebook the page. Fiddlers were up here fiddling away, and we had a great audience. It was really fantastic. Really. Uh, fantastic. I almost decided to come, but uh, it was yeah. a busy day. <laughs> Okay, we'll keep the camera rolling again, just so people can get an idea of the scope this here. This is the conference room. Okay. So we're able to have big, large meetings, and uh, we put up historical pictures around the room. There's little captions on all of them for people to come. Um, so this is where we'll have our board meetings, and hopefully people within the community may be able to come and use the room uh, and share their ideas and partner with the Hemingford Archives. All right. So all this right. is a great room. Are you, a, are you a native of the area? Or? No, actually I'm not. My stepfather is. Um, my mother remarried uh, and my stepfather uh -huh. is a native of the Hemingford area. So that's how I became connected with it. And then I retired in 2014 and my mother lives in Hemingford. So I bought a house down here recently. And I'm really only been here three, about three years. And I'm just merged. about, yeah, well, I, but I'm also now I'm relocating to Ontario. So oh, you moved? I'm, yeah, so I won't be here much longer. Oh, okay. So I've, do, I've done the best I can for them, and they're going to move on and continue. So we're going to go into the back into where the collections, the, where the real core, the heart of the archives is. This is really what the Hemingford Archives is all about, in my opinion, and that's what it is. This is where the collections are kept. This is where our chairs for meetings are. This is where we're keeping everything that makes us uh, the Hemingford Archives. So you see we've got boxes, they're full of photographs, there's maps. As we come over to this side on the left, we've got filing cabinets. Fam these black cabinets here from A to Z, they're family files. So if you're a Smith, uh, I can't think of the names in the areas, but you know, Patch, you know, you know all of the, there's a family file there. We have all sorts of historical books, documents that have been donated by various families, signs from family, old family businesses. I've heard some signs. of those came from a Gaitan Fortan's collection. Yeah, and we also uh, we got a Frontier Inn sign. It's behind you, but yeah, I saw that. Yes. Yeah, we got a Frontier Inn sign. Uh, Keddies gave a sign from their store, so we put them up. So this is really where everything happens. People come in here, they can go through the files, they can do research um, and, and get pictures. We have a computer station set up, and it's got a program that's called Archie Log. And what it does is uh, we're able to enter everything and tag it and put comments on it to make it easier to find. And that's how we do our filing, so everything is numbered. So then we're able to research, we're able to go into it and do a query. So if we want to find out stuff for the War of 1812 uniforms, uh -huh. we put it in and it tells us where to go. Oh, really? So that's a fantastic tool to have. So this, like I said, this is really for me. You can see people are always interested in coming in here and looking up stuff. And there's no end to what we have in here. No, no end. You realize we were on opposite sides in 1812. You realize that? Yes, right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I don't know if there's any other questions that you have. Well, okay, so if somebody opened up a, a cabinet here, what would they see? We'll just say in the front. Well, this one is uh, churches and cemetery files. Okay. So you're going to get. has got to be a popular one. St. Luke's Church, Roxham Road Church, St. Romain Catholic Church, heritage sites, cemeteries, information on cemeteries, uh, Union Church. So. Uh, and, and it's not only Hemingford, it's Hemingford and surrounding areas. So to say that it's the Hemingford Archives, it really includes back to uh, like the 1920s, even back into the 1800s before uh, all the, the townships split up here. Mm -hmm. So we've got Havelock, um, Hinchinbrook, Black Church, Howick, uh, St. Bernard de la Colle, some of uh, Sherrington, Huntington, all the stuff that used to be there, and they've all split apart, but there's still a lot of that information here. Yeah, uh, well, I know, what year would the uh, 200th anniversary have been? Was around, around 2000 or so, or yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. I know the booklet put out there was Hinchin Book and Hemingford, it was 
kind of all in one type of a deal. So yeah. it's very much synonymous. So you see all sorts of stuff like cemetery signs. People might have given us pictures. Uh huh. Archives, Catholic Barrington Catholic Cemetery. So somebody's put some kind of information in our yeah. in our the, in the system. Old, the old Sorry, there, there might be from Odell Town and yeah. You know. So we get this stuff. Now, is there copying machines and stuff here, so people want to make copies? Or? Yeah, we've got the, the lots of uh, printers, photocopiers. We have uh, the inkjet ones, and we actually just recently purchased a laser one for better quality uh, photocopies. So we're set up for that. We're set up for faxing, emailing. I know you have a Facebook page. Is we there a, a website Facebook. in addition? Or there is a web, there's a website, but you're going to probably be more up to date on our Facebook page. Okay, Dan Mark is the person who keeps that up? That's or? right. Dan does that, yeah. He refused to talk to me, you know. Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to zoom in on him over yeah, there. Yeah, I say he's over there I'm now. Yeah. Zoom in on he does it, and I'm also an administrator on the Facebook page with him. Okay. Because uh, he... he he keeps it, he maintains it and keeps it, but he has his own way of working, and I have another way. So he opened it up. He let me into the Hemingford Archives Facebook page. Anyway, um, so I can put some posts and information on it for events and stuff. Now this is uh, trains that used to come through here. No more yeah. trains in Hemingford, correct? Yeah. No. No. The, we're working on an article for the next Info Hemingford that um, hopefully it will be a, a little bit of the history on the trains. There's two people who are researching it right now uh, to, to look at get something written in the info hemming for. And Dan and Sharon are the ones who have gone and put all these pictures up. They've sorted through everything back here, they've repaired them, they clean them up, and then they try and find an artistic way to hang them. So all the pictures that have been hung out in the outside area in here in the conference room is basically Dan and Sharon that have done that. Okay, so, Dan, Mark, and Sharon? Yeah, okay. Dan and Sharon, Mark, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's really, that's what we're all about. Okay, and that's again, and Monday through Wednesday? 10 to 4. 10 to 4. And, and Saturday from 10 to 1. Okay. And, and all a person has to do is call. Uh, if, they, if they can't come and they want to come in an evening after work and they want to come around or they want to look something up, all they have to do is call, uh, call us and uh, somebody will arrange to meet up with them. All right, this is certainly a... How long has it been? I know I've watched some of the progress uh, online through the Facebook page. It hasn't been very long that it's been in this type of condition here. That yeah, we, we physically moved all the boxes and everything out of the elementary school here around end of September, early October. But we were up to our eyeballs in boxes. <laughs> so it's really been since Good. December, since Christmas, that we've become disorganized. Yeah, yeah. And now we started doing our events since Christmas. You know, we had uh, Carol Gregoire. Uh, who uh, had his five-year anniversary that he passed away. We did a tribute to him. He was a violin maker. And then there was a quartet that came, a violin quartet that played. And then, you know, we had the Fiddler's Fancy. And so we've been having events coming in. And now we've officially opened it. We have been open, but we wanted right. to really officially open it. So now it's officially open. So. Somebody trying to get your attention over that way. <laughs> you have a question? Uh, all right. The best person, well, you see, this is this goes to Myrna. So find Myrna and ask her. Myrna <laughs> is the best because she's the one that does the Archie log. She's the one that knows the files really well. And anyone has a question, she's the go-to person for right. the Archie log stuff. All right. That's Myrna who? Myrna Paquette. She's okay. the secretary. She's, uh, you were talking to her before. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we say Paquette on our side of the... Paquette. Packet. You say packet. Packet. You say well, you probably packet. say tomato then, right? Uh, no, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's really covers it then. Yes, I well, we appreciate you taking a, a few minutes away from your wine mm, and cheese. Not to, a problem. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Right. It's a pleasure. I'm glad that you came to see it. I am too. I, yeah. Uh, and and then, uh, uh, stop by and visit any time. Well, any time, but on those days, yes. Yeah, right. on those days, or call and uh, set a time. Yeah, so yeah. Come, we have a Keurig coffee machine. Oh, well, there so you go. So you always go. come and have a coffee. There's always, coffee is always brewing here at the See, Archives Hemingford. Wine is not always no, no, brewing, no, but coffee is always brewing. Enough. Coffee and tea, anytime. All right. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're going to close it up now. A very nice tour, very nice facility here. It's very close to the U.S. border for all of our viewers on the U.S. side of things. Uh, 
It's right here on the Champlain Street. If you come to the intersection, the intersection's right there, just on the other side there. So you're coming up from the Moors area. That'll take you right to this intersection, the first major intersection you come to. Uh, it's called Archives Hemingford. Look on the Facebook for their Facebook page. Uh, it's, it's a growing site, a growing uh, museum here. Just a little background. Uh, today, as we said at the start, is May 5th, 2018. Last night we had extremely windy weather uh, in this area, in our area, north, uh, south of the border in northern Clinton County. Uh, tornado watch till about 10 o'clock. Fortunately, as far as I know, no tornado came down. And there were strong winds throughout the night. They lost power here about 10 o'clock last night in Hemingford. And the power came back on 11 o'clock this morning. And I know other areas in Champlain, I know Shazy lost power in areas, uh, Harry's Mills, uh, Champlain area, Moore's area, some of those areas lost power. So the power came back on uh, at 11 o'clock this morning. So they, I imagine it was kind of frantic when they woke up uh, and the power was still out. As they knew they had this open house today, but they did an excellent job. And it's nice when the community does this and everybody gets together. So that's it, Hometown Cable in beautiful downtown Hemingford, Quebec. This is viewer-supported local television, Hometown Cable. If you're watching this, we need your support to keep this programming coming. As it says up there, we are five kilometers, if I can see it in the sunshine here, five kilometers from the U.S. border. Those aren't miles. So that's uh, about three, three and a half miles, somewhere in between. Viewer supported Hometown Cable, thank you for watching.